What's up guys and welcome back to the series, a full week of tanning, t tanning, training, <laughs> full week of training with me, maybe the tanning series will come at a later date, who knows, eh? So today, it's day three, traps, delts, and chest. Let's go. All right guys, so we're out here, once again, Nirvana gym, had to be done. It's just a place to be really, six o'clock. Beautiful time to train, and I can train topless, which is absolutely amazing. So, I am gonna be doing chest, shoulders, and traps. This is the second time which I'm hitting delts, so I'm gonna vary it up a little bit from when I did delts on day one. First exercise I'm gonna do is incline dumbbell press. Absolutely delightful. I would say out of a lot of the exercises out there which most people get wrong, it is pressing movements, particularly the incline dumbbell press. Because a lot of people are just over engaging the front delt. They can't keep their scapula retracted or fixed in place. Whenever they press, it creeps forward. They start off in this position, the shoulders are already protracted. They bring the weight down and then they just push again. And the chest is not engaged whatsoever. Well, it is a little bit, but not a huge amount. The first thing you need to do is set, pin your shoulders back, not too far back, but far back enough, and keep your shoulders fixed in place. You should notice a massive difference. hard very quickly because I'm trying to keep to that tempo if I don't meet the required reps I'll just speed it up ever so slightly so I would do three sets maybe do four sets if you want to just up the volume but realistically I don't need a huge amount of volume I always wonder whether it's just is it genetics that I've got quite a bit of mass on my chest or is it because it was like the first thing I started training when I was younger I remember when I was like 16 years old I was in my bedroom all I did was press ups and crunches and my abs and my chest have always been fairly well developed so I don't know if there's any proof or science behind whatever you do at an early age will that always be a strong point of yours or is that just me chatting absolute nonsense so a lot of people ask me Mike what's better for building your chest dumbbell press barbell press which one should I do now in my opinion they both have their use in a proper structured training program it's really down to the individual and how they execute the exercise. Like I remember my first few years of training, I didn't really feel as though the barbell press was doing much for chest building, but I think that's down to the fact that I wasn't really executing it properly. Okay, so I built the majority of my chest from doing dumbbell presses. I feel like I get a, a slightly better range of motion, a better contraction, and it's just because it's a free, you got free movement, so it's potentially better sometimes for uh, your joints and so on. But it's completely dependent upon the individual. Okay, for me, I will usually go through a few weeks of doing just dumbbell pressing and then I will switch it over to 
doing some barbell pressing, okay? So each training split, I vary it up. So that is the first exercise done. Next, we're gonna go on to the dumbbell lateral raises. I'm doing a slight variation. What I'm gonna do this time is, I'm gonna do like a chest supported version. So it'll kind of prevent me from rocking backwards and forwards and it'll keep me at the angle at which I want to maintain my torso at. I'm gonna keep my hands straight and just come all the way up like that, maintaining as much tension as possible on the mid delt. Now, because last week I was doing like 10 to 12 reps, I'm gonna increase it this week. I'm gonna do 15 reps. I get more of a delt pump when I'm doing raises with lighter weight compared to when I'm just like, you know, I've done it before trying to do lateral raises with 20 kilograms. Get a bit of a pump, but doing it with the lighter weights, it feels like my shoulders have just exploded. Next exercise is gonna be a overhead shoulder press. Now, instead of dumbbells, I'm gonna use a Smith machine. Could use barbell, like a free weight barbell, but good thing with a Smith machine is there's only one direction you can go and that is up allows you to just lift a little bit more weight and you're not really relying upon your stabilizing muscles as much, okay? So for me, I'm setting the angle high enough that it's gonna hit my delts. I'm gonna get obviously a bit of upper chest engagement as well. But uh, the focus of this exercise should be the front delt. I don't do a huge amount of front delt work. That's because it does get worked when you're doing a lot of your chest exercises. felt okay. It's kind of hard to gauge what weight I should be doing on this one because this Smith machine, I don't think it's been oiled since 1993, so it's a little bit rusty. It's adding like an extra 20 kilograms of resistance, so probably gonna add a bit more weight. Final set, gonna do as many as I can. Pretty damn heavy, I'm hoping to get eight. If I don't get eight, it's not the end of the world. I'm just gonna do what I can, and I'm gonna drop the weight, okay? So I'm gonna slip those 15 kilos off and just wrap it out. It'd be nice to have a squat, but uh, I'm gonna do it by myself. Okay, so now we're gonna go into a superset. We're gonna do a dumbbell chest fly superset with a lateral raise machine. Now, dumbbell chest fly. Oh my God, Mike, why are you doing that? It's so dangerous. Well, yes and no, right? The majority of exercises, which everyone does, they can be dangerous if you don't do them properly and you do too much weight, okay? If you have the movement under control, you should be okay. Yes, there probably is gonna be a little bit of extra risk associated with doing a dumbbell fly, but Every now and then, I like to throw it into my routine because it's effective. The other exercise I'm gonna do is the uh, machine lateral raise. It's an all right machine. I personally love to do the, uh, the cable one, right? I would usually do like a lying down 
cable laugh arrays, but this gym is not really the best equipped gym for doing that particular exercise. So that's something which I'm gonna incorporate into my next split, which is gonna be in a couple of weeks time. Body fixed in place, driving high with the elbows. Slight pause at the top. The reason why I like doing the machine and the cables is because the cables and the machine will apply a little bit more extra resistance to the bottom of the movement. When you're doing dumbbells, the, the hardest point in the movement is that sort of top portion, the top third. All right, and at the bottom, when the muscle is lengthened, you're not really applying a huge amount of resistance to it. Whereas at the bottom here, or within a cable, Already at the bottom of the movement, there's quite a lot of resistance here. So I'm providing that additional resistance to the lengthened position as well as the shortened position. So one thing works. Wow, I'm struggling today. So one thing which I've not really touched upon is rest period. I don't really put it into my routines anymore because it's come to my realization that you need to kind of gauge it and you need to be intuitive with it, right? Whenever I'm resting, my goal is to rest long enough so that when I come to do the following set, I can either match or increase upon the previous set's intensity. Okay, that is the goal. It might be 60 seconds, it might be 90 seconds, it might be two minutes. It depends really how hard you push yourself in the previous set and whether or not it's like an isolation exercise or a compound exercise or even like a, a superset or a triset. Okay, so. It's probably best if you're a beginner to have some kind of benchmark where it's like 90 seconds or something but as you become more advanced of a trainer you will know how long you need to rest. But you don't want to be taking the piss, right? You don't want to be resting more than two, three, four minutes. Okay, We're not training here for strength. We don't need that amount of rest. This is hypertrophic training. We're trying to maximize muscle mass. Okay, so there's a fine line of your rest period being too long and too short. You need to find that sort of middle ground. Someone's just jumped on a lateral raise machine. That's completely ruined my superset. Okay, so next we're gonna go on to a superset. It's gonna work on the posterior chain slightly. We're gonna hit the traps and the rear delts. First one, we're gonna do reverse pec deck to hit the rear delts. What I'm focusing on here, pushing shoulders forward and just going through about a 
half to two thirds of the range of motion, okay? Wherever I can just maintain that tension on the delt, I, just, I don't want to retract my scapula and over engage my back. And then we're going to do incline dumbbell shrugs, pretty self-explanatory, so let's go push shoulders forward. Me personally, I'm doing a bit of trap work because I feel as though that's something which I can improve upon. When I look at my physique, obviously I see it quite a lot. I'm always critiquing myself, seeing where I can make improvements. It's not really a case now where I just want to be bigger and bigger and bigger. I pretty much reached my genetic potential. It's just all about getting the proportions right. Working on a little bit here, a little bit there. Maybe trying to like bring my body fat down a little bit. There's always something to be working upon. It's like a it's like I'm painting a canvas which is just like never completed. It's very rare that you'll see a bodybuilder who's like fully satisfied and is like, yeah, I've done everything I need to do, I can just sit back now. You can never sit back. It's constant, constant work. Okay, so last exercise which I'm gonna do is barbell shrugs. I would personally prefer to do hex bar or trap bar shrugs just because it's a little bit easier on the joints. It's more of a natural range of motion, but there is not one in sight in this gym. So I'm just gonna do barbell shrug. Technique wise, lean forward slightly, keep your spine completely neutral and just lift up and squeeze as high as you can and then completely relax, okay? Uh, you're just basically trying to get the greatest range of motion possible. I see people do shrugs like that. That's not a rep, that's like point three of a rep, okay? Full range of motion. I like to finish up on this exercise because it's not like, I don't find this one too taxing. You know, I'm only really using my, my traps for this exercise, so it's just something which I'll take to failure as the last exercise. Uh, I felt all right, probably gonna add a bit more weight on that. To be honest with you, like the, the routine which I've done today, that's specific for me. Right? If you want to focus more on your chest, with your lower pec, mid pec, whatever it might be, then maybe switch around one of the exercises which I've done, do an extra chest exercise, or maybe do a few more sets on one of the chest exercises which you've chosen. It's much better for you to choose fewer exercises, but just get really, really good at executing them and doing more volume, as opposed to doing loads of different exercises and just executing them like fairly average, okay? So that is the session. Hope you enjoyed it. If you want to do it yourself, try it out. The full workout is in the description of the video. 
If you need any subs or you need any topping up in case you run out of protein powder, etc., check out myprotein.com. Shipping to most countries worldwide. You can use my code Thurston for a tasty little discount. Give the video a thumbs up, it'd be much appreciated. And I'll see you in the next video. The next video is going to be a rest day. So I'm going to talk about everything I would typically do on a rest day. If you have any questions regarding this whole series, your training, your rest recovery over training, whatever it might be, drop the questions below and I will answer them. I'll try my best in the next video. See you soon.